before we get out of hand and claim that I'm some QAnon conspiracy theorist, let's get past that. Remember, I am specifically looking at the history of GameStop from start to finish. It just so happens that as soon as I started looking, GameStop became public right around 9-11. So I'm just pointing out key facts. That is all. And remember, I wanted to say one thing real quick. There's nothing wrong with looking at history and trying to, you know, figure out the situation that we're in. I have a lot of people that, you know, don't seem to care about the situation we're in and only seem to care about, you know, the potential profit. Trust me, that will come. But this uh, should really be a time for us all to reflect and um, come together because, you know, this stuff, looking at this stuff, seeing all of this happen for so long, and it seems like everyone's involved. I just, I just don't think enough people realize just how special of an opportunity that we're all living in collectively as a major underdog, you know, and, and, and we're not, we're not risking our lives every day uh, by doing this. We're up against, I think the greatest evil that's ever threatened, you know, threatened humanity. Um, and we're sitting here with a real shot at doing this. And I think that if we just come together during this time and learn, don't go hype stuff. Don't go to Vegas and and make this a public thing. How is that going to help anybody? We The end game in this, the goal in this is to hold these mofos accountable for all of this blatant shit that they've done for so long. And at the same time, we get paid for it. But we can't get impatient. We can't get greedy because then we're acting just like them. So anyways, that was my two cents. We're going to bring up a, a few key facts regarding the first and original entities that had their hands on GameStop. So who were they? The main two underwriters, which an underwriter for security is in charge of distribution and an IPO especially. And this happened in February of 2002. So that was an incorrect date there. So I will change that for the PowerPoint. This happened in 2002, slightly after 9-11. Now, UBS Group, AG, was the pri uh, secondary underwriter. And then we had Salomon Smith Barney Incorporated that was the primary underwriter and was also the book running manager of GameStop. Now, the book running manager is the lead underwriting firm that runs or is in charge of the books in investment banking. Obviously, 9-11 was just prior to GameStop's IPO release, not a QAnon conspiracy, just pointing out facts relevant to the underwriters in question. While this doesn't connect GME to 9-11 in any way, shape, or form, nor am I making that claim, I'm simply pointing out the factual behavior that has been documented by the aforementioned underwriters for GameStop. Was GME in good hands? Doubtful. UBS Group AG. On November 3rd, 2000, UBS merged with Payne Weber, an American stock brokerage and asset management firm led by Chairman and CEO Donald Marin. At the time of its merger with UBS, Payne Weber had emerged as the fourth largest private client firm in the United States, with 385 offices employing 8554 brokers. The acquisition pushed UBS to the top wealth an asset management firm in the world. And the reason I said 8554 is because I'm going to try doing that with numbers for the subtitles. I'll be getting a lot of uh, feedback on that. Now, starting on June 9th, which, <laughs> of course, interesting day, right? 2003, all UBS business groups, including UBS Payne Weber and UBS Warburg, were rebranded under the UBS Monkey or following, uh, following company start of operations as a unified global entity. Now, if you want to go to Wikipedia and look at this, you probably can't see it because it's so small. This is the uh, creation tree or the merger tree of UBS that dates back to the 1800s, I believe. So, um, you know, there's so much to learn in this situation. Like you can go and pick a topic and, and it just goes to show how precedent or unprecedented the situation we're living in is because it ties into these entities that have been, you know, so powerful over such a long time long period of time now notable topics of interest regarding ubs ag i'm not going to get into this i just wanted to point it out in case any of you out there want to look any further into this um there's you know, wikipedia they have separate uh, paragraphs here titled hidden assets bank vaults and bunkers tax evasion so 
There you go. <laughs> Salomon Brothers, the 80s and the 90s. So some notable info surrounding Salomon Brothers. They were founded in 1910. So again, long standing history here by Arthur Herbert and uh, Percy Salomon and a clerk named Ben Levy. It remained a partnership until the early uh, 1980s. And then in 1981, it was acquired by the commodity trading firm uh, Fibro Corporation and became Salomon Incorporated. Eventually, Salomon was acquired by Travelers Group in 1998. And following the, later's, uh, the latter's merger with Citicorp that same year, Salomon became part of Citigroup, which is relevant today. So it's not like we're talking about, you know, businesses way back in the early 2000s that have, you know, ceased to exist. No, no, no. They've only grown stronger since then. Salomon created the first mortgage-backed security. What a surprise. Shortly thereafter, Salomon purchased home mortgages from thrifts throughout the United States and packaged them into mortgage-backed securities, which it sold to local and international investors. Salomon Brothers Incorporated was an American multinational bulge bracket investment bank headquartered in New York by the end of the late 1900s. It was one of the five largest investment banking enterprises in the United States and the most profitable firm on Wall Street during the 1980s and 1990s. So Salomon Brothers in 2001, um, was, they were acquired by Travelers Group in 1998, of course, and then following um, the merger with Citigroup or becoming part of Citigroup, the combined investment banking operations became known as Salomon Smith Barney. Now, Salomon Smith Barney, the investment banking operations of Citigroup, the division was renamed on the 7th of April, 2003, to Citigroup Global Markets Incorporated due to treasury bond malpractices in the 90s, which if you'd like to go look at more info on that, uh, again, I've linked everything in this PowerPoint, which I'll include in the description below. So the name change from Salomon Smith Barney Holdings Incorporated to Citigroup Global Markets Holdings Incorporated was done in order to replace the tarnished Salomon Smith Barney name with Citigroup branding today. I'm sorry, this, <laughs> with Citigroup branding. Today, the Salomon Brothers and Smith Barney names remain as service marks belonging to Citigroup Global Markets. So now we know the original underwriters are now cloaked under the name of Citigroup Global Markets because they changed the name specifically to escape the tarnished reputation based on the bond scandal they were involved in. And this is a 13F filed from the uh, 14th of May, 2003. We can see that they've been uh, diamond handing some GameStop for quite some time. And I believe their holdings uh, as of today are quite a bit more. Now, notable topics of interest regarding Salomon. Again, this is facts. I just want to point this out because I think this is very interesting. So. This is a list of tenants in, in World Trade Center 7. Now, if we start from the ground floor, I'm sorry, let's, let's go and start from the uh, top floor. You can see here that from 47 all the way down to 28, Salomon Smith Barney is listed. 27 and 26, same thing except Standard Chartered Bank. 25, Department of Defense, Central Intelligence Agency. 24, Salomon Smith Barney. 23, Salomon Smith Barney, New York City's Office of Emergency Management. Number 22, Salomon Smith Barney, Federal Home Loan Bank. 21, Salomon Smith Barney, First State Management Corp, or Family Management Group, Hartford Financial Services Group. Lots and lots and lots of finance related stuff, mainly dominated by Salomon Smith Barney. Number 19, or Floor 19, Salomon Smith Barney, Hartford Financial Services Group, NAIC Securities. And then from 17 through 14, uh, we it's listed as blank, which is very, very <laughs> interesting to me. But um, again, I'm not going to go any further into this than what I'm showing you right here. If you want to go any further, that's on you. Again, research is fun. You can find out a lot of truth by looking into the past. Floor 13, Solomon Smith Barney. And then we get some uh, 12 and 11 floors, uh, Securities and Exchange Commission. Hmm. Number 10. U.S. Secret Service, Standard Chartered Bank. Number nine, U.S. Secret Service. And then number eight is American Express. Number seven is American Express with Provident Financial Management. And then the rest are, of course, Salomon Smith Barney. So again, if you forgot what World Trade Center 7 is, it's the building that collapsed on 9-11 long after the first two towers, 
The reporters called it before it happened, much like we see with stock predictions today. And that's as far as I'm going to go into it. And then if you look at it broken down by tenant, based on most square feet lease to lease, you have Salomon Smith Barney as the number one. The IRS Regional Council is the number two. The U.S. Secret Service is the number, oh, I guess number four. Uh, American Express Bank International. You have Standard Charter Bank, Provident Financial Management, IDT Hartford Insurance Group, Federal Home Loan Bank, NAIC Securities, Securities and Exchange Commission. I mean, this is all stuff we're living in right now. Like this, this relevant stuff that we can draw from. So again, just pointing this all out. Nothing to mean that MOAS is, is you know, not going to happen. I'm just saying this just goes to show how big this moment is. We should take advantage of it.